Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Ryan, and I'm a guide for the Central Park Conservancy, and we are the non-for-profit organization that takes care of Central Park year-round. We help to raise the money to care for Central Park, and we care for just about everything from the statues and monuments to the trees and landscapes. Today, we're going to be exploring a specific area of the North Woods, the Block House. Before we begin, I do, just want to, I do just want to extend a big thank you for everybody joining us. We've been receiving a lot of great feedback for this weekly walk series, and we certainly couldn't do it without you. Uh, we received a really nice email from some longtime fans of ours from Nottingham, England. So I want to take just a quick moment to shout out our fans from Nottingham, England, and our fans from all over the world. Thank you so much for showing really just continued interest in this weekly walk series we've been doing. We certainly are having a really fun time doing it. It's really special to us and we hope it's been special for you too. So thank you so much for continuing to join us on the continuation of these weekly walk series that we're doing. All right, so we are taking a weekly walk of the block house area in the Northwoods. As you may have known if you've joined us in the past, just about all of the photos you're gonna see on this walk were taken by myself in the past week or two, with the exception of just a few photos, which were taken from archives like the Central Park Conservancy's archives, the New York Public Library archives, the New York Historical, uh, the New York Historical Society archives, and the New York City Parks Department archives. The last three of those, which are uh, publicly accessed domains that you can access from a home computer. Uh, the walk today is going to be about 15 to 20 minutes, and we'll get right into it. Uh, real quick, one last thing that we're going to talk about, just a little bit of housekeeping. I'm sure some of you have joined us for these weekly walks before, but we're using Zoom, which will allow you to participate. You can use a chat feature to say hello, maybe let us know where you're joining us from, or maybe let us know if you visited this area before. You can also use the Q&A feature if you have any questions, and my colleagues Juan and Ian are going to be on the back end today answering any questions that you might have. The last thing that you're going to see pop up on the screen are going to be some visitor polls. These polls are going to be quick little questions that once you answer, they'll disappear. And I'll actually launch a quick poll right now. I'm going to start with a really simple one. Have you ever visited the Blockhouse before? So the Blockhouse is located in the largest woodland in Central Park, which is going to be the Northwoods, coming in at 40 acres. So even if you explore the Northwoods a few times, it's going to be pretty hard to really find the Blockhouse, even during the winter when a lot of the deciduous trees have lost their leaves. So I'm going to end this poll in just a moment. Looks like we have about just under 225 people joining us today. So again, thank you so much for attending and thank you for voting in the polls too. In just a moment, I'll share this result and we'll see if anybody's ever really visited this area of the park before. Here's a quick little map of the area we're going to be walking in, uh, walking in covering just a small section of the Northwoods. So I'm going to actually end this poll and share results. And not surprisingly, a majority of people have not been to the Blockhouse before. So we're happy to take you here for the first time and give you a little taste of the Blockhouse so you can explore it the next time you visit Central Park. Okay, so we are gonna quickly just talk a little bit about the history of the Blockhouse. Known as Blockhouse Number One, this is a very historic structure that exists in Central Park. Might come as a surprise, but this is the actual, actually the oldest existing structure in Central Park, and it actually predates Central Park, being from about 1812. This structure is known as Blockhouse Number One. Uh, it was finished around 1814, and it was really fortified between 1812 and 1814 in preparation for the War of 1812. There was fear that the British were going to reinvade and try to come back for the island of Manhattan. So this area was fortified to provide a nice defense. There was during this time two wooden decks installed within it, as well as a revolving turret. This building ended up being finished around 1814 at the end of December but it ended up being finished about two days before the Treaty of Ghent was signed. The Treaty of Ghent effectively ended the War of 1812. So this was finished right as the war pretty much ended and did not need to be used for any type of battle. It did kind of change up its use a little bit after and did go through about another two phases of construction to really take on the shape that we see it as today. 
Uh, there was a few other block houses throughout Manhattan. If you've ever taken past weekly walks, you might have taken the Northern Forts weekly walk with my colleague Brendan about probably two months ago. So if you have, you may notice a few of these names on the right hand side of this picture, like Fort Clinton and Fort Fish. Both of those fortified areas exist in Central Park today. They don't really look like they used to, but they still are there. And just above Fort Fish, you might notice this one with a little square. That's representing Blockhouse One, which is again still in Central Park here today, and which what we're going to be talking about and exploring. Just above that, you'll notice two and three. On top of Block Blockhouse One, there was also two, three, and four, which were constructed in Morningside Park and looked a little something like this. These blockhouses don't exist anymore today. So the blockhouse here in Central Park is really the last remaining one of these that we can see. When designing Central Park, Central Park is a man-made park. The designers saw this old historic ruin existing in the pre-park landscape. And instead of tearing it down, they wanted to incorporate it into the landscape, leaving it on those big rocky hills, putting trees and other beautiful flora around it and making it a picturesque ruin that you could find. They dressed it in really cool viney type of plants. So when you would walk through the Northwoods back in the 1800s and 1900s, you would come across this old ancient stone rune existing in the middle of the woods. A pretty cool feature that we can still find today. So we'll snap back to present day and begin our exploration to the blockhouse. So we're going to be entering the park at Warriors Gate at 110th Street, Central Park North, and 7th Avenue. As we enter the park, we'll start to get some of that beautiful color just slowly taking effect, a lot of lush green, and we'll bear to the right and start to cross the street and enter the North Woods. Uh, as we always do, look both ways so we don't get hit by a bicycle. And as we come across the street, we're going to do one thing before we enter the Northwoods. We're going to throw out whatever trash we have. The reason we're going to do that now is because you may have noticed if you walked around Central Park's woodlands, there are not trash cans in the woodlands. And that is purposely done because it helps to keep something we don't really like out of the woodlands. It helps to keep rats out. Rats flock to our trash, so by removing the garbage cans from the woodlands, not only does it make it easier for our operations staff to efficiently clean up trash, it keeps a lot of the rats out of an area where they typically would gather. On top of that, the garbage cans we have are designed to prevent rats and rodents from climbing up into them. So it really helps to keep the park cleaner in a lot of different senses, both trash and wildlife wise. So as we enter the park now, we've thrown out our trash, we'll walk up these Manhattan mica schist card steps. And as we walk up these steps into the Northwoods, we're greeted by a little bit of destruction, but pleasant destruction. If a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? I don't know. But if a tree falls in the Northwoods and we're able to leave it there, we will, because even a dead tree is a good tree. These dead trees will slowly decay, eventually releasing minerals and nutrients into the landscape they surround. On top of that, in the meantime, they're gonna provide a home for a lot of different bugs and insects as they decay, which will in turn provide food for a lot of different bird species that are migrating through and other animals that call the Northwoods home year long. So we will chop this up, take it away from the path and leave it on the side to go back to nature. As we walk up the path just a little bit more, we're gonna start coming into the Northwoods and start really going onto some of the wild trails that make up the Northwoods. One of the best things about coming into the woodlands is we get to walk on trails rather than on these paths. So the difference between paths and trails, paths are gonna be like asphalt paths, sidewalks, things that are gonna be really hard materials. Trails are gonna be dirt, wood chips, leaves, things that make us feel more connected to the woods that we're exploring in. So we're gonna take this little wood chip trail, walking just by some of the fallen oak tree we were just looking at, and come up to some of the massive rock outcroppings that make up the northern end of Central Park. One of the reasons the northern couple blocks of Central Park were added to the park was because of these huge rocks. They couldn't incorporate it into the grid system. It would have been way too costly to try to blast through this using gunpowder. So they figured just incorporate it into what would be Central Park. So we have a lot of these beautiful giant rocks up in the northern end. And as you walk by some of the rocks in the north and south end of the park, you might notice some of these white marks on them. Those white marks are gonna be kind of a chalk or powder substance like a talc. And what those are coming from is actually sort of a sport that you can see or participate in in Central Park, bouldering. 
Bouldering has been an activity that's been done in Central Park for quite a few decades now. You can find famous rocks in the southern end like Cat Rock, Overlook Rock, and Umpire Rock to go bouldering in, as well as many large rocks in the northern end. But these little white marks are telltale, telltale signs that somebody has been bouldering nearby. Many times you can also see a lot of wood chips that have been dropped down underneath these popular bouldering rocks to add more of a cushion in case you were to fall off but certainly some signs of bouldering in the north end of the park we can see as we walk by these beautiful giant rock outcroppings that paint a picture of what inspired Central Park, being the upstate New York Catskill and Adirondack Mountains. Certainly a very picturesque scene in this northern end. And as we walk down the path, we'll come by some more of these beautiful different woodland trails. And actually, I wanna launch a, a quick, another quick poll real quick. I wanna see if you have a favorite woodland here in Central Park. We're again exploring the Northwoods right now, but there's plenty of great woodlands like the Ramble as well as Hallett Nature Sanctuary and a lot of other little side paths that aren't considered woodlands but do add their little uh, kind of wilderness exploration to the park. But we're gonna walk down this nice little trail and then hang a left. And as we come up, we'll walk up some more of this just really dense wooded area that completely blocks out all of the buildings nearby. As we do walk up just a little bit more, we'll come to a clearing bow and on our left, we can look up this large Manhattan mica schist cluster. And at the top, we'll start to see the flagpole that exists on the blockhouse. You can see that, that uh, flagpole is at half mass right now. And the flags are flying half mass to pay tribute and respect to all of the people that unfortunately lost their lives during this COVID-19 pandemic. So we will get up to the blockhouse in just a little bit, but we'll continue up the path for now and come to some of these beautiful Manhattan mica schist wood carved steps. As we come up here, I'll actually I'll actually end the polling that we see. I got a majority of people voting in this one, and it looks like the uh, winning result for that one is actually my favorite landscape, the Ramble. So the Ramble located right in the middle of the park nearest uh, Bethesda Terrace and Belvedere Castle, really easy to get lost in. The Ramble has certainly a lot more kind of laid out paths, whereas the Northwoods is a little bit more free roaming in some of the trails and paths that there are. But certainly every woodland you could go to in Central Park is going to do its job of providing a respite and escape from the city that surrounds us. All right, so we're going to continue up these Manhattan like a schist carved steps. As we come up the path just a little bit more, we're going to come to some beautiful little flora popping up during this time. These are going to be some common blue wood aster, a native indigenous plant that we can see all throughout the woodlands of Central Park, especially here in the Northwoods. Pretty little fall bloom as we walk up. And as we start to come up kind of to this little crest in the north, uh, north woods, we're going to finally start to get a peak at the blockhouse. And what we can start to see now is this beautiful kind of just hidden rune existing behind all of these trees, which are holding on to their leaves for dear life, providing a nice little kind of sheltered look where you'll get the full picture until we're immediately nearby. And if we had visited the park back in the 1900s during the season, this is kind of what we would have been walking up to. Still pretty cool, but not, not really as nice as what we're experiencing now. The blockhouse certainly has changed up along with the park as well over the few years. Today, of course, a much lusher, more full, mature forest surrounding it. So we get a much more beautiful walk up to the blockhouse. Now the blockhouse again has changed up quite a bit over the years. In 1812 to 1814 was when it was largely constructed, being finished just before the War of 1812 ended. But in 1995, there were excavations done that show that the, found the foundation of the blockhouse traced back to the 1700s. It was actually originally the foundation, at least, constructed by British and Hessian troops. Eventually, it would be refortified between 1812 and 1814 by American troops. And then eventually, it would be turned in to a little bit of something different. It would eventually be turned into a storage facility for ammunition used for the war, uh, the American Civil War between 1861 and 1865. We do see a few years before it being fitted with an extra two feet of stonework added to the top, as well as a roof to keep all of that gunpowder dry. And this would be used for quite some time until about the end of the 1800s when that ammunition would eventually really be taken out. The blockhouse certainly looked quite different with the roof. It kind of looks like more of like a catacomb or like a tube. 
but we do eventually see it being changed up yet again in the 1900s. In the 1900s, we do see that roof being removed. We do see a flagpole being added, and we see a little staircase be at, being added right near the door. The staircase does allow you to walk up to the door of the blockhouse, but good luck getting in because it is locked up tight. Occasionally, you can go in here with the urban park rangers that offer short brief tours, but there's nothing really to see inside besides the base of that flagpole and a bunch of native weeds that are growing in here. But if we go just to the side of the blockhouse, we can get a little bit more of a, of a view of what, or really get a view of what we used to be able to see, which is a wide expanse towards the Hudson River. Coming over on top of this rock, we can look over, and of course the trees have grown quite a bit, as well as the buildings, so we don't get the fullest of views, but we can see a couple hints of how far we're looking. If we look just over here in the middle where my mouse is, you can see the top of the George Washington Bridge. Just to kind of uh, use our imagination, we can see a general distance. That's gonna be a few miles away. It is about, I believe, over 100 blocks away, or 100 streets away, which is at least five or six miles. So quite a far distance we can see, and you can imagine if everything was clear, it would be a very expansive view, a great spot to build a little fort. Looking down, we can see that spot where we were looking up before on top of this big cropping of Manhattan mica schist. And the blockhouse, is actually made of Manhattan mica schist, as well as red sandstone. It was put together pretty quickly and they used whatever stone materials they had lying around. So plenty of schist lying around, you can imagine. And even though it was built pretty quickly, the blockhouse has certainly stood the test of time. You can see something in this picture that has certainly built up a little bit on the edge of it. There is a little bit of actually graffiti that was here when we came to take these pictures, but luckily we have a wonderful operation staff and a great graffiti policy here at the Central Park Conservancy. If graffiti or when graffiti is reported within 24 hours that graffiti will be removed. So this graffiti is long gone and the only remnants of it are this picture. So if you go visit the blockhouse, you'll be greeted to a nice clean ruin from the 1800s. Um, as we walk around, a lot of really nice foliage existing around the block, uh, blockhouse in the North Woods, but there was something falling that I was noticing and it wasn't leaves, it was nuts. Nuts and shells were falling all around when I was going to take these pictures. And as I looked up, I saw they were coming from this tree, a bitter nut hickory, and you might guess what they were. They were hickory nuts which were falling. The shells from squirrels that were opening up the nuts and eating them or making stashes of them. Uh, hickory nuts as well as many other different nuts and fruits throughout Central Park will be cached or made into a storage for the squirrels and other rodents that are making up collections of food during the winter time. So these were uh, certainly being gathered up in large amounts by all the squirrels of the Northwoods preparing for the colder months up ahead. So we're going to be coming up to kind of the east side of the blockhouse and we'll take one last beautiful view before we end our walk. So what we're going to be coming up to is really this south view. This is what we would have seen again back in the 1900s during this kind of fall wintertime season. Trees haven't really matured in all the way just yet, but we do have this beautiful little picturesque ruin. It's really beautiful to see how some elements of the park have remained the same, like the blockhouse, but the woods and different kind of flora that make up this beautiful park have certainly grown and stood the test of time. So here we can see a present view of this beautiful little ancient ruin that's nestled in the middle of Central Park's largest woodlands, the North Woods. So this will bring us up to the end of our walk, but before we end, I just wanna launch a quick little poll. So this is gonna be a fun one. I mentioned that the blockhouse is actually the oldest structure that remains in Central Park. It's kind of like the old, one of the oldest things in Central Park. Well, let's see if you would like to guess what the oldest object in Central Park is. So here's a fun little question to end and I'll let everybody vote while we do our little wrap up. But again, thank you so much for joining us for these weekly walks. We really enjoy doing them and we have plenty of other ways to stay involved. You can always come back to more of the weekly walks we have every Wednesday at 1230. I'm gonna be your weekly walk host for about the next month. So you can join me next Wednesday at 1230 as we explore the pool, a beautiful landscape packed with a lot of nice foliage. Besides that, we do have longer virtual tours every 45, uh, every typically on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, the next upcoming one is going to be on Tuesday, and it's going to be a Heart of the Park tour. 
you actually check the chat box right now, my colleagues Juan and Ian will be dropping some of the links for upcoming weekly walks and virtual tours. And we've recently started a really cool behind the park series. Um, this behind the park series is gonna talk with expert operation staff and people that do some of the work firsthand in restoring things from statues to architecture. We have a behind the park, recreating Central Park's rustic architecture with the assistant manager of preservation, Sam Vargas, coming up on November 18th, which is gonna be a really cool tour. But no matter how you wanna join us, there's plenty of ways to stay involved, both on our website and on our YouTube channel where you can watch past week weekly walks. I'm gonna launch or um, end this poll real quick and share results. And we have some smart people with us. So you are correct. The oldest object that you can find in Central Park, with the exception of, of course, Manhattan Mica Schist, which is the bedrock, is going to be the obelisk. The obelisk, otherwise known as Cleopatra's Needle, is over 3,000 years old. So really good work. I see 46% of people guessing the right answer. Thank you again so much for joining us. We'll be back again next week. Hope to see you then. Um, I will leave this open for a few minutes. So if there are any last minute questions, me and my colleagues can answer those for you. But once again, thank you so much for joining us from all of us here at the Conservancy. Stay safe and be well.